So um, the game plan is roughly the same. You guys got about 10 minutes, and I'll let you know when you have two minutes remaining. I'll let you know when you have one minute remaining, yada yada. Um, and then uh, it should be the pro side first, lady side. Then the men do the con for 10 minutes, and then we'll take a break, and we'll do the rebuttals again. So the topic of this debate uh, is, is the question of whether the United States should follow the plan that Colorado has done and legalize and distribute uh, recreational marijuana. Pro side? Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, this all stems from the Colorado um, legalizing marijuana. So Colorado, Colorado's <coughs> Amendment 64 states that with the passing of Colorado's Amendment 64, currently dispensaries and caregivers can only sell to licensed Colorado medical marijuana card holders. Um, licensed, obviously, they're going to have a medical condition that requires them to use marijuana, which we will go into. Um, but I want to mention that we live in America, and America's right. Um, we should be able to do kind of what we want here. Not fully, obviously, but under um, medical supervision. Um, prohibition must be weighed against the loss of personal freedom. Countries have a responsibility to respect individual free will and the right of self-determination. Um, it's not worthwhile for a law to forbid forbid people from willingly exposing their own bodies to harm by using drugs any more than overeating or like bungee jumping. Here in America, we have a lot of obese people and we don't regulate their food intake and that causes a lot higher of like uh, medical issues, deaths even, um, a lot more than marijuana would being legal. Um, also, in 2007 alone, this is just going to like the um, jail population. There were almost 900,000 marijuana-related arrests in the U.S. 89% of these were for possession alone. That's one marijuana arrest every 36 seconds. So um, we're just kind of, we want America to be able to have medical marijuana. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and marijuana has been shown it's a viable medical option and it does help in treating certain diseases. There are those who do believe that there are no medical benefits from marijuana. But in the Institute of Medicine report from 1999, there are a certain population of patients who, with, chronic disease, with chronic diseases that don't respond to medications and marijuana is their only viable alternative. So the active component, component in marijuana is helpful in treating many diseases and their side effects such as pain, nausea, vomiting, and um, specific diseases. Uh, it can help with al Alzheimer's, it can reduce anxiety, and will help with anorexia associated with HIV as well. It can also be used in cancer patients who experience extreme nausea and vomiting. Uh, it also has been shown to help with migraine headaches and MS, specifically with the uh, spasticity in muscles, and it will help with their chronic pain, and um, marijuana has been shown to be effective in treating these populations. Um, one, the chief medical correspondent for CNN, um, he was a pro not a proponent of marijuana use for medical purposes in 2009, but in a August 2013 article he wrote, Why I Changed My Mind on Weed, um, says he changed his mind in saying he was not um, reading the articles and available evidence properly and saying that um, his mind was biased beforehand, but now he truly believes that there is a high potential for leg legitimate medical uses of marijuana. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, the pros of legalizing marijuana from like the economic standpoint. Um, it's the nation's largest cash crop, and bringing it under law would um, create jobs and revenue um, for the state and local governments. Um, Time Magazine reported that we spend 
about $10 billion a year in an attempt to keep uh, marijuana off the streets, while the state of California alone has <coughs> um, a revenue of $14 billion a year from the production of legalized medical marijuana. Um, also, Colorado, it's projected that they're going to bring in this year $98 million for the state. Um, and they plan to use these funds for treatment programs, um, school construction, and deterring young people from using the drug since it's only available for those 21 and up to purchase. Um, also, um, like Teresa mentioned a little bit earlier, one out of eight U.S. prisoners is locked up for um, some marijuana-related charges, and over half of them um, are for personal possession so, and nonviolent offenses. And also, um, a study was done, and it says that um, African Americans and Caucasians use marijuana at similar, rate, similar rates, but um, an African American is almost four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession. So this would help um, in mitigating racial discrimination between the two um, by legalizing marijuana. So overall, our main points are um, it generates taxes and revenue for the states. Um, it can be used for medical purposes. And um, also, the Americans have the right to choose to use marijuana as a medical option if that's something that they want to do. Thank you very much. Now, the con side. Cons. All right. Um, I'll begin it. I'm Marlon. Um, we're doing the con side. Uh, I want to start by talking about um, the revenues, actually. Um, she mentioned that it's going to, the estimated uh, revenue that it's going to pull in um, in Colorado is $98 million. According to an article in Forbes magazine, it's actually false. Um, it's $40 million. And when you look at a <coughs> Colorado state budget, <coughs> It's actually uh, fifty billion dollars, and about fourteen billion dollars goes to education. And if uh, if you measure that forty million dollars, that's going to be going into um, the schools that, that's going to be generated from the revenue from uh, uh, recreational marijuana use. Um, it's actually like 0.07 percent. So if we look at it like that, I mean the revenue that's going to be generated from this this uh, new laws is it's like a like a drop in the ocean. You know, a drop of water in the ocean. It's not going to really make a difference in the school system or the roads or like the quality of living for anyone in the state of Colorado. And if it was if it was applied to Michigan, it'd be very similar. Um, Michigan state budget is about 53 or 54 billion dollars, and again, 15 billion dollars goes to uh, education. So if we're making 40 million dollars on recreational use of marijuana, it's not really going to make an impact on the school systems here in Detroit or Michigan as a whole. Well, I wanted to bring up uh, the health issues related to uh, legalizing marijuana or decriminalizing it, as they've done in Colorado. Um, right now, it can be used to treat pain, glaucoma, um, nausea, vomiting. But there's also alternative treatments for these, and what makes marijuana better than them uh, is what I like to counter. Um, first of all, the most used form is smoking marijuana, inhaling it. And there has been an association between smoking marijuana and um, inflammation and in the airways, let me read the exact statement here. Uh, an increase in cough, sputum, airway inflammation, and wheezing, similar to the use in tobacco smoking. Um, as far as, it's difficult to do a lot of studies, basically, um, so they find linkage between cancers, but a lot of that is due to people also smoke tobacco and smoke marijuana. So there's unclear data there. But that being said, marijuana smoke contains about 50% more benzopyrene and 75% more benzanthracine, which are known carcinogens, um, and compared to tobacco smoke. So essentially they have known carcinogens in them, but the actual studies linking them are not there yet. We may see this in the future, the linkage actually coming out. And, as you, and if you see with a lot of drugs nowadays, you see, you know, they, they approve something, they legalize it, and then 10 years down the road, there's a lawsuit because they find it's linked to, you know, a cancer of some sort. Um, so essentially by doing this without the research there yet, 
you could be setting yourself for another situation like that. Also, um, just the process of people who smoke usually have deeper inhalations and hold their breath longer, and this causes a larger time frame of exposure of the carcinogens to the lungs. Um, people may also say that um, it's dose dependent, and uh, a quotation here for someone on the uh, National Drug Control Policy um, says three to four cannabis cigarettes a day is equal to 20 tobacco cigarettes a day. Um, and essentially that's gonna be more exposure of these carcinogens to, to their lungs. Um, some other devices for smoking marijuana, there's been vaporizers, eating marijuana, and devices that use water filters. However, um, Studies have shown, studied by Gehringer in 96 uh, and Bloor in 2008, have shown equivalent amounts of tar in anything with water filters and uh, vaporizers. They will um, eliminate the amount of tar. However, there's an exposure to ammonia with the vaporizers, which can have cause irritation in the, uh, the airway as well. So that will still not take care of the inflammation area. Then eating marijuana is will bypass that whole uh, delivery system of the air passageway, but um, dosing comes with complications because you don't know how much you're gonna be absorbed as much as not as accurate per person, essentially, so there's more of an overdose problem with that. Um, another thing I wanna bring up with health issues is cognitive ability. There hasn't been anything, any good controls showing like a long-term use um, associated with it, but short-term use there definitely has been studies, one by Bartholomew shows um, memory impairments and cognitive um, impairments with uh, acute use of marijuana. Um, and this is especially the younger you start using it, if you're a young adult, it seems to have more profound effects than if you start using an adulthood just for a couple times. Um, that I'll leave my all right, so I wanted to talk about the differences and the variations of the marijuana products. Um, you know, there's no standardization as far as medical marijuana or recreational marijuana goes. Um, it has been shown that, that the THC content from the 1970s up until now has increased steadily to a point where that it's almost four times as strong as when it was, you know, originally used in the 1970s. So marijuana is also an unstable mixture of 400 chemicals, including many toxic psychoactive chemicals that are largely unstudied and appear in uncontrolled strengths. This comes from a California Narcotics Officers Association um, on just the study of marijuana. So it also showed that, that there are withdrawal symptoms. They mentioned that there wasn't, but there is. So there was a study that was done um, by Alan J. Budney, PhD, that says that this study validated several specific effects of marijuana abstinence and heavy marijuana users to show that they were reliable and clinically significant. These withdrawal effects appear similar in type and magnitude to those observed in studies of nicotine withdrawal. So craving for, mar craving for marijuana decreases appetite, sleep difficulty, weight loss across the smoking and abstinence phases. It also may cause aggression, anger, irritability, restlessness, and strange dreams that are increased significantly during one abstinence phase but not the other. So now, they also mentioned that you know, medical marijuana or recreational marijuana could be used to combat several medical conditions. Well, in a study that was done, or I'm sorry, in a comment that was done by a U.S. Senator said that although I understand many believe that marijuana is the most effective drug in combating their medical ailments, I would caution against this assumption due to the lack of consistent, repeatable scientific data available to prove marijuana's medical benefits. And it says that based on current evidence, we believe that marijuana is a dangerous drug and there are less dangerous medicines offering the same relief from pain and other medical symptoms. So in a study that was done by the National Eye Institute, because glaucoma seems to be the number one use or treatment or justification for the use of medical marijuana, and it says in an effort to determine whether marijuana or drugs derived from marijuana might be effective as a glaucoma treatment, the National Eye Institute supported research studies beginning in 1978 However, none of these studies demonstrate that marijuana or any of its components could lower intraocular pressure as effectively as drugs already on the market. In addition, some potentially serious side effects were noted, including an increased heart rate and a decrease in blood pressure in studies using smoked marijuana. 
The identification of side effects from smoking marijuana coupled with the emergence of highly effective FDA approved medications for glaucoma treatment may have led to diminished interest in research in this area. And this is from the National Institute of Health in 2009. So to conclude that we don't believe that the revenue is going to really do much as far as any states or nationally. Also, you know, the effects on the lungs are, you know, very evident even though there are other dosage forms. And then lastly, I would like to say that, um, you know, there is no standardization as far as product goes. You know, if they started research or they did research or they started to standardize what they were producing for the market, I think it might be an effective or viable medication. But until that happens, it won't be. Thank you very much to all of our panelists. And now, so we'll turn it over to the pro side for the rebuttal. Okay, so you guys mentioned that marijuana uh, does not really have any viable options in a, for medical situations, but that is not true. According to the uh, former Surgeon General, in she says there is overwhelming evidence that marijuana is able to relieve pain, nausea, vomiting, and other symptoms that are, and is also less toxic than many other drugs regular, pre, regularly prescribed, saying that um, there are certain cases where uh, drugs are not effective and in this subpopulation marijuana is effective in treating these side effects. Also you mentioned that the concentrations are stronger now than they were 30 years ago. Um, that is true and marijuana users know according to the NIDA saying that they know how to um, decrease their intake with, but getting the same amount of um, effect from the marijuana. And with what she's saying, um, with marijuana users knowing their product, then if they know <coughs> that they have a higher amount of THC in their product, then they're not going to smoke as much. So that's going to cause less damage to your lungs and your whole respiratory system. Um, and it also, it's not yet known if marijuana contributes to to lung cancer risk. Um, that was a fact online. Also, um, one point that I wanted to make was with um, young people wanting to try marijuana, with the fact that it is illegal, they're going to have to go outside of their comfort zone into like possibly like a shady neighborhood or um, maybe somebody who's selling marijuana and like cocaine or you know something else. So they're going to have have higher exposure with marijuana being illegal to other drugs um, because they're not able to go to a pharmacy. I mean, children shouldn't be smoking anyway, but just the exposure rate. Um, as an adult, you can go to the pharmacy preferably and get it, and you're not going to have the pharmacist asking if you want a bag of cocaine with your, you know, with your marijuana. So that's definitely a pro in having marijuana legal. Um, I just wanted to add a quote in by Dr. Lester Grinspoon, who is an associate professor um, of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. And he says that marijuana is the safest drug. He says, aspirin is safe, although it claims between one to 2,000 deaths per year, or people per year. With cannabis, it's around 1,000, it's been around for thousands of years. There has never been a death, never been a death. Is there any other substance in the in the pharmacopoeia about which you can make that claim. I'm not sure there is. There you go. Okay, so <laughs> you guys said that um, it has some side effects and it can um, cause lung problems. And the Journal of American Medical Association did a study and they found that low levels of marijuana use produce no detrimental effect in lung function among study participants. Um, you also said it has, um, I also found a quote or a statistic from the NIDA that those who started smoking marijuana as adults didn't show any significant IQ declines. Um, and like in Colorado, it's only available for adults anyways. Um, the, you mentioned that the tax revenue was closer to $45 million, but that was an old estimate. And it actually is um, up to $98 million now. And that's because at first there wasn't as many, um, what do you call them, medical marijuana retail stores open. And so that's a new updated um, budget based on that. 
And then also, I mean, you said it wouldn't make much of a difference, but I mean, coming from parents who are both teachers, I mean, any money in school systems can help because there are so many budget cuts every year and they have less and less money. So, and also we're spending, like I said earlier, $41.8 billion a year just based on arrests, um, paying the police officers to make these arrests, um, the jail time and everything, which a lot of that would go away. So that's additional dollars that we would save in taxes that way. Um, okay, thank you. Right. I'm going to go to the All right, so most medical marijuana patients have been hustling the system and adapting it to their own needs, okay? Um, currently under Michigan state law, you're allowed to grow 12 plants for every patient that a caregiver has, okay? A caregiver is allowed to carry six patients, that's 72 plants. One plant can produce about three quarters of a pound to one and a half pounds per plant. Now, I don't know what patients usually smoke, but I can't imagine that each patient is smoking a pound and a half times 12 every single month. That'd be 18 pounds of marijuana. So where does all this marijuana go? Well, they say, you know, it goes to help schools and stuff and dispensaries and it gets taxed. It doesn't get taxed. It goes out on the street. People buy it. They make money off of it. And it's one of the largest cash crops in the U.S., even though the medical marijuana movement has been going forward. So the violence that is now being associated with this market sector is also increasing due to the massive amounts of untaxable cash income that these people are holding. So recently, in a study done in Michigan, they have tightened the regulations on medical marijuana licensure due to the fun finding out that patients and caregivers are abusing the system by shopping doctors that will give them <coughs> approval for money. So this is from the DEA in Detroit. This just recently happened in 2012. So we were also not saying that there is no medical use. We were just saying that there is a better, less harmful medication option to treat the same diseases. Would you ever want to smoke something when you could just take Zofran if you're feeling nauseous? I mean, I don't know about you, but Zofran has been put through clinical trials, is approved for almost every single patient population, but instead you're going to go smoke something out of a bong? Like, I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I mean, from the American Lung Association, marijuana smoke contains a greater amount of carcinogens than tobacco smoke. In addition, marijuana users usually inhale more deeply and hold their breath longer than tobacco smokers do, further increasing the lungs' exposure to carcinogenic smoke. Marijuana use is not only associated with adverse physical effects, but also mental, emotional, and behavioral changes. People who smoke marijuana frequently, but do not smoke tobacco, have more health problems and miss more days of work than non-smokers. Many of these extra sick days are due to respiratory illness. Patients considering use, using marijuana for medicinal purposes should make the decision in consultation with their doctor and consider means of administration other than smoking. So if you want to use a different dosage form, fine. But like Josh mentioned, that's the number one dosage form that patients use. And you also mentioned that there's no deaths by direct overdose. That is true. There is no deaths that have been documented by direct overdose. But there are deaths from many other disease states. So just, um, you know, think about that. So Josh is now going to talk about marijuana. I'm sorry. So I want to talk about one thing. Um, I guess uh, the issue here is the recreational use of marijuana, not the medical use of marijuana. They're mentioning that the medical use has benefits, but I mean, if, if we were to make it recreationally legal, I feel like we're creating a barrier for us to understand a drug and cannabinoid receptors that we'll never actually understand if it's recreational. If there isn't any kind of supervision program in place, like a MedWatch program that pharmacists or you know nurses or doctors can monitor, um, then we'll never really understand these things we don't have any clue about. Um, also, uh, if, it, if in fact the, the estimated revenue is $98 million, that's still um, a 0.6% increase um, in the money that's going to be going into the school system. I mean, that's still just a drop in, of water in the Atlantic Ocean. I mean, if you look at it like that, it's not really a, a revenue benefit. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Josh here. Yeah, Marlon really touched on a good point. Um, sure, there's medical benefits of it, but Colorado legalized it recreational use. So you're going to have to think, is this thing safe enough where you can for sure say there's going to be no long-term consequences and you're not even helping a person, essentially? With re recreational use, it's not like they're getting a medical benefit out of it. Um, one, one of you mentioned, I forget who, but mentioned that um, all these things, uh, 
essentially, just because it has a medical use doesn't mean everyone should have access to it. I mean, people use, uh, surgeons use cocaine in surgery. Does that mean we should open up a cocaine dispensary? I mean, it's not worth uh, the overall risks and the addiction potential. And from an NIHS study, um, show that 9% of users become addicted to marijuana. Uh, most people have a stigma like marijuana is addictive. The younger you start using it, uh, the more likely you will become addicted. This number says up to about 70% um, for those who start using it young will continue to use it daily. Um, also, the classic, it is a gateway drug. Um, there was a study that uh, Yale University conducted from 18 to 25 year olds, so kind of younger adults. Um, and 12% of young adults abuse prescription drugs, so that's another category of abuse. And out of that 12%, 34%, so a third, over a third, used marijuana prior to start beginning their opioid um, prescription drug abuse. Um, and just a rebuttal, I mean, smoking is the main way to get these drugs because it's, people smoke to titration essentially. They smoke to when they feel the effect, whereas if you eat something and you're bypassing that, you could get too high essentially. All right, lastly, one more point. That, that you also mentioned that <clears throat> marijuana decriminalization and regulation in Colorado and Washington will lead to less use by teenagers. In actuality, it will not lead to less use by teenagers. You usually get alcohol, prescription meds, and those are all heavily regulated by the government as well. So regulation or dysregulation will not impact usage. It was also mentioned by a former WD director of the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy that <clears throat> by characterizing the use of legal drugs as quasi-legal, state-sanctioned, Saturday afternoon fun, legalizers destabilize the so societal norm that drug use is dangerous. They undercut the goals of stopping the initiation of drug use to prevent addiction. Children entering drug abuse treatment routinely report that they heard that pot is medicine and therefore believed it to be good for them. So we stand by our point that marijuana decriminalization is not something that is needed in the United States. Thank you to both groups.